Hi everyone, welcome back for another video. Apologies for the length of the last video, our November update on heating our home with just electricity. We've turned our oil boiler off. This is the content I was supposed to give you at the end of the last video, but the video was just too long, so I didn't include it. I've done this as a separate video for you. So this is the detail that covers the actual oil-filled radiators, the Von Haas radiators that we're using to heat our home at the moment, and the CASA smart plugs that we're using to control them, to turn them on and off, both manually and automatically. So I hope you enjoy this content. I hope it answers some of the questions that I was asked in my first video about this subject. And uh, thank you for watching. Uh, here we go. This is about the radiators and the CASA smart plugs. I've been asked a few times in the comments um, which uh, smart energy plugs do I use? And it's these, the TP-Link CASA smart plugs. Uh, there's one with energy monitoring and there's one without. But these are the ones that I use. So the CASA smart plug itself, that plugs into your socket, you leave your socket on, and then the plug from your device, that plugs into the CASA smart plug. And then it's the CASA plug that's deciding whether you get any electricity through your socket to your device. You can do it manually using the button at the side, which turns the device on or off, and you can hear a nice reassuring click as it uh, turns it on or off, or you can use the app to control it. So let's quickly show you the app, the CASA Smart app. So it gives you a list of the devices. So I've got a couple of light bulbs and then I've got um, smart plugs that are set up. I've put an E in front of the name when they are energy monitoring ones, just so that I know which ones I'm looking at. They're all the radiators and heaters. And then I have a couple of just smart plugs at the bottom here, which don't have energy monitors on them. So even my internet connection is uh, on a smart plug that I can turn on and off. Uh, my television and all the sound bar, that's on a smart plug, and it's timed to go off at certain times of night as well. Um, so basically what you've got is, let's take this one in use already, it's on. So if I press the button, either there or back in the last screen, it'll turn it on or off. But I've got an energy icon here, and it shows me the amount of energy used uh, currently, 332 watts. Uh, today, um, one kilowatt hour. The average is 1.14 kilowatt hours uh, for the last seven days. The average over the last 30 days is 1.66 kilowatt hours. Then you've got the total for the last seven days and the total for the 30 days. So um, very good information. If you swipe across, it shows you runtime as well. So you can see how many hours it's been active. So on average, I've got this um, heater is on on average two and a half hours a day. That's all. The schedules are really, really easy to use as well. Um, all you do is click the plus and it creates a schedule. You can turn it on or off. So if I want to turn it on, let's press this one. And let's turn it on at uh, 2 o'clock. And then if these are coloured here, if they're on, then it's going to be on that number of days, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, etc., that it's going to repeat. So if I don't want it to repeat, I turn them all off and it will just do it once. But if you don't want to set the actual time that it comes on, you can set sunrise or sunset. And then you've got also before and after. So after sunset, 15 minutes after sunset, it will now um, turn on on every day of the week. That's basically how it works. I won't save that because I don't need it. So as you can see here, I've got it set for every day of the week to come on at five o'clock in the morning and go off at uh, half past six in the morning, just before the um, cheap energy with Octopus Go ends. And I've also got an automatic off at half past eight as well, in case I forget and leave it on for any reason, uh, that just turns it off. So that's all I'm using that for. But these are really, really easy to turn on and off. So um, if you were trying to control them manually without the timers and you just wanted to turn them on or off, I could use this with Alexa. I could use this with Google Home Assistant. So I could say, OK, Google, turn on the bedroom lights. And now the bedroom lights are on. So apologies for saying that OK word if your phone is set up to accept anybody's voice rather than your own. 
Anyway, I hope that's useful, just to explain a little bit of how these Kessa smart plugs actually work. OK, and a quick demonstration of these Von Haas radiators. I like these because of the thermostat controls. I have tried um, cheaper devices, and what I found with the cheaper devices was that the radiator heated up to start with, and the thermostat went off very, very quickly. So the thermostat was more responding to the heat of the radiator, not the heat of the room. And because it was going off more often, it didn't actually put enough heat out into the room and wasn't an effective radiator. These, the thermostat works quite well. So hopefully you can hear that working. Um, this one is, they measure them in how many fins there are. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's a nine fin radiator. This is two kilowatts. It's a shame that they work on the two kilowatt basis. They always describe and market these devices as the higher power wattage is more effective you know, and the, the better product, the more expensive product, where it's a bit of a shame because it's the lower power setting that's more important, isn't it, for when you're trying to be efficient and eco. It's what eco mode, how cheaply can you run it and still be effective? These two buttons control um, the power wattage of the device. So press the button in on the left. That's number one. That's power setting one. That's going to be about 900 watts. Um, press in just button number two over there. That's in mode two. That's going to be something like 1200 to 1500 watts, something like that. Press them both in together. That's mode three. So that's the full two kilowatts. So they're the three power level settings. I find you only need it in one, so the lowest value. And what happens is it might take a little longer to heat up, but it still heats up the same temperature in these fins on the inside. And the output of these is going to be the surface area of these fins multiplied by the temperature that's possible of the oil inside the radiator. So it's not going to put out any more heat on the two kilowatt setting than it does on the lower setting, so long as temperature of the oil inside is exactly the same which I believe it is it seems to put out exactly the same heat in all three settings all that happens is it gets there faster because you're putting more power in to heat that oil up faster so in a solar configuration um, what we want is smaller inputs of power not large inputs of power going on and off more often so this suits a solar configuration when you've got it just in the button one and this here that's just a handle um, to move it around because obviously these get quite hot so you need something to pull it around and just move it down and as you can see it's on four casters as well so it moves around quite easily okay i hope that was just what you're looking for and answers the questions that i've been asked in my previous videos and of course if you haven't seen those other videos there's a series now of video updates where i am testing how many kilowatt hours is it going to take to heat our home with just electricity and that leads on to all the questions and thoughts about how to heat your home how to get rid of the oil boiler and the gas boiler and all those sort of things and shall we go air source heat pump or air to air do we need uh, home ventilation systems dehumidifiers all these wonderful questions and things that are coming up now. Hope you've enjoyed this content. Hope the radiator and the plug detail was just enough for you. And again, sorry for the length of some of these videos. I'm getting quite passionate about this. I'm really enjoying discovering how to heat our home differently. I'm quite excited about getting rid of the oil boiler. Also, next year, I really can't wait to get those air source heat pump quotes. Because if they're good, we still might go down that route. Um, Although this is revealing and showing that it's really cheap to heat your home using cheap electrical devices, these aren't really a heating system. They're not really designed for this sort of purpose. So we do need something more robust that will last longer. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for liking the video. I'm sure you have by now. And uh, thanks for subscribing. If you haven't, you know you should. Take care. See you again soon. Bye for now.